In this part of the lesson, we'll take a brief look at how we can validate a numeric value entered into an Excel input box. Let's begin by opening the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and if necessary, click the Enable Content button before we head to the Developer tab and open the Visual Basic Editor. In this module, we have the basics of a simple mortgage calculator system. All we have so far is a variable using the long data type, and we capture a value in that variable using the result of an Excel input box whose type is set to 1, meaning it can only accept numeric values. So that means that if I were to run the subroutine by pressing F5, if I attempted to type, to type in a non-numeric value, such as uh, lots, uh, we, we need lots of money to, uh, to buy a house these days, if I clicked OK or pressed Enter, I get a little validation warning saying the number is not valid, exactly as we'd expect. If I do enter a value that does fall within the range of the long data type, let's go with 100,000, say, and then click OK, we'll see that that value gets accepted as normal. This procedure still can go wrong, however, if we enter a value which exceeds the limits of the long data type. So the limiter is about 2.147 billion. So if we wanted to buy an incredibly large house, let's, let's be ambitious, let's go for 3 billion and then click OK. Now clearly that's not going to fit into the range of the long data type, so clicking OK this time generates a runtime error, an overflow error. We've exceeded the limits of a particular data type. Uh, clicking debug will show us the, the single obvious instruction which has caused that runtime error. So what can we do to solve that? One simple approach would be to use the variant data type to capture the result from the input box, and then once we've captured it, test whether it falls within the range we, we need. So let's change the data type from long to variant. We can then begin an if statement that allows us to write some specific validation for the range of numbers we're interested in capturing. If we're borrowing money, we shouldn't be allowed to enter a negative number, so we could simply begin by saying if loan amount is less than zero, then. We could present the user with a message box which says something like you must enter a positive number, so let's just do that quickly. Uh, you must enter a positive number. And then if the user clicks OK, we can simply then exit from the subroutine. We could then use an else if statement to check whether we've exceeded the limits of the long data type. So we can say else if loan amount is greater than 2,147,483,647. And I promise I didn't just read that number off a piece of paper. <laughs> Believe me if you like. So um, if we've exceeded the limits of the long data type, we could add another message box which says you can't borrow that much. Uh, you may well want to and add a much lower limit. I, I can't imagine any bank wanting to loan quite that much uh, to buy a house. Um, so let's quickly finish off this simple uh, message box. Then we again can exit from the subroutine and then let's have the end if statement. Once we've established that the value we've captured does fall within the range of the data type we really want, we can perform a conversion to store the value as the correct type. So let's say loan amount equals, and then I'm going to use the CLONG or CLNG function to convert this to a long. So let's say CLONG loan amount. If I now view the locals window so that we can step through the procedure and see what's going on, we can then click into the procedure and press F8 to begin. So let's start by entering a negative number, minus one, two, three. We get the standard warning message that I must enter a positive number, there we go. And then we exit from the subroutine and that's it. Let's run it again and type in, let's try to be ambitious again and borrow three billion and then click OK. This time, of course, the value isn't negative, but it is exceeding the limits of the long data type. So we can't borrow that much. All good. And then if I run the subroutine one more time, we'll capture the result first of all. Let's go for 100,000. So much more modest than 3 billion. And we can see that the value has been captured in the variant type with a subtype of double, which is the default for, for any numeric type or the result of, a, of a, an Excel input box whose type is set to one. So that's not less than zero. It is not greater than this value. Therefore, we convert the subtype of the variable to a long, which you can see happen down here. And then at this point, the subroutine ends.